me, diversity and inclusion in the workplace allows all individuals, um, no matter what background they're from, to really thrive and be themselves um, uh, without fear of harassment or being bullied. Considering language, culture, um, maybe it can also help to make people with different um, cultural upbringings or cultural backgrounds feel comfortable to work. Many organizations focus on diversity, which is about the, the makeup of a workforce. Inclusion is about the culture that enables that diverse workforce to thrive. Um, and without inclusion, diversity really becomes uh, quite, quite meaningless. It needs the two together. I think an inclusive workspace has a diversity of people present. The people are involved, um, development and empowered by the business. Um, important to include everyone in the conversation and that employees feel respected, valued and are able to fulfil their potential. It's fundamentally about redressing the imbalance that exists currently in the makeup of our workforces. We've spent too many years, I think, in the transport industries and elsewhere, recruiting people in our own image, rather than looking across the whole breadth of society. And that isn't just about disability, it's about a lot of other issues too. But if we don't have a workforce that is representative, then we don't, we don't make good policies, we don't have good practices. Diversity and inclusion for me in the workplace is important because allowing people to thrive in their chosen career is just the right thing to do. To me, it's, it starts with the way that you advertise, the way you recruit, um, but also the way you think about your workforce. There's an awful lot of myths that still exist about employing disabled people. Oh, they'll be off sick all the time. Uh, we'll have to spend a fortune changing the toilet and so on and so on. Most of that is complete and utter nonsense. Um, the figures there will show you that disabled people actually have one of the lowest levels uh, of, of sick record of any employees. There's help available where adjustments are needed. And a lot of the things that people are frightened of simply don't exist. So I think organisations can do an awful lot to champion diversity and inclusion. And I think the key point here, that it hasn't got to cost a lot of money. It hasn't got to mean that you uh, completely rip up everything that you've ever done. I think there's an awful lot we can do at the very basic level around recruitment and retention that could really, within, say, five years, transform the culture of the organisation and the people that work within it. I think that's what Silk's role could be. We have a responsibility to erase stigmas and to deliver on the DNI. And that's what I think SILK can do as a, in its role. I think the work that CILT is doing is vital. I think that uh, CILT's role um, is to continue to raise awareness around DNI and to share that knowledge and best practice. I think it's enormously important for CILT to be engaged in this debate because that brings on board um, a lot of very senior people across the transport industries and it gives a very clear signal that this is not um, an afterthought, it's not a minor issue, it's something that needs to be addressed right across the transport industries and at senior level. This is about active volunteers with common interests seeking to promote uh, and, and raise the profile of, of their particular uh, area of engagement to the wider membership. And our role at the centre is to support that, but then also to take those messages through our public publications and events, and push that out to a much wider audience. Championing uh, DNI uh, to our members uh, will really support the attraction of much needed talent to our profession. And also it will help us to support our members and organisations to be successful. I see Silk's role is to be ambassadors of excellence in the D&I space. So 
in terms of the future, I think um, there's a huge opportunity, um, a bit like the war. Um, I think the COVID pandemic uh, allows for disruptors to come in. And I think disruptors in this instance will be the people who have not previously been um, identified as belonging to this profession. In the future, uh, in the logistics and transport sectors, I'd like to see greater representation, especially in senior levels of management that really reflect the communities that the organisation serve. Because if you look at the diversity elements, uh, the women in logistics and uh, the Pride Forum represent versus what the accessibility and inclusion uh, group do. One's very much about culture, uh, the other is very much about practicality. Um, and I think there's an opportunity for us as we move forward to actually widen uh, the forums within the diversity and inclusion uh, community. I mean, supply chain, logistics, both are boardroom imperatives at the moment, probably more so now than ever before. There are so many challenges uh, forthcoming years. We've got the, uh, the focus to reduce costs. We've got resilience. We've got living with the Brexit. We've got sustainability, whether it's in, in the types of fuel, the damage to the environment. We've got technological advancements out there in the form of AI and its impact. Uh, we've got the demands from the customer, uh, whether it's delivery times, whether it's service, quality. All of these challenges will require diversity in thinking. Having all hands on deck, we can um, overcome all the challenges we have for one and all.